So, hi everybody, uh, welcome to Football in the Blues. Um, again, this is, I think this is number 10, I think. So, this, one, this time I've got a face-to-face. -face. Uh, the last few have just been, um, unfortunately, it's been on teams and it just is what it is. But, uh, but today I've managed to get Phil across. Um, so, Phil works with uh, one of our contractors, Siemens. Um, Phil and I have chats very, very regularly, uh, just letting me know how I'm from with the two is to see what we can do on sites. Um, if you haven't already, as I said, if you think that these chats help anybody, by all means, send up your friends, um, to the way people that you think might be able to to get a wee bit of these and, and a bit of benefit. Um, but first, welcome to Football on the Blues, Pagan Blues. Good morning. It's, uh, it's been a long time. We've been talking about it for the last few weeks. We've been trying to do it a while, mate. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it, it's usually different. And it's usually different. So, um, just tell us a wee bit about yourself. Well, Phil Nixon. I've been working with Seamus about seven years now. Now, site site manager. But before that, I was in the army for 10 years. I was an aircraft technician. In the reading served me in Iraq, Afghanistan, various other places around the world. Right. Whereabouts are you from, Phil? From the Northwest. Where it's sample burst only in Southport, England. But live in the Highlands of Scotland now. That's right, and Glen Cole, aren't you? No, Newton Moore, Avi Moore. Avi Moore, so it is. Avi Moore. I mean, is it the most zen place in the world. Wow, fantastic, mate. Better yeah. than the hills. Full of snow all, all year round, it's beautiful. Excellent, mate. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I've listened, I know you're a, you're a big football fan as well, and I, I, I say to everybody that, that listens to the show, I always like to start things off with a, a bit of chat about the football. It's it's always the first thing that I ask people when I go out on the side and just try and get that. Yeah. It's I mean you, you've seen it with Davy um, with, with being a Man U fan and that I know each of the guys when I mean, Phil works with me up at this job up at Shetlands and we we know who everybody supports. Do you know yeah. and you, you know if it's like after the old fun game at the weekend, you know who to dodge <laughs> and who you can talk to. Um, so just a wee bit about the football, mate. What's your, what's your team? I'm a red and a blue, so I love blue and Rangers. And that's why Phil and I got on so well. On the scene. <laughs> there's reasons, there's method and Craig's madness. Um, and it's so what, what's the Liverpool's obviously? Your, it's like your dad's team. Yeah, yeah. dad's side of the family from Liverpool. So side yeah. of the family. Yeah, I grew up not far from Liverpool. What's the it's what's the Rangers connection? Is that, uh, Do you know what it is? I was. When I was in the military, my, my tra I was two years in training. I was always in Reading or right in the south of England. And I was never interested in going on. I, I just wanted to be away. It was too far for the Scottish boys to go on. Right. And all the Scottish boys were Rangers fans. Excellent. And then they, they were all out with me watching European Cup final 2005 April 3-3. Right. Brilliant. It was me and all the Rangers boys. So then I just thought whenever they were going, the trap and I don't go and watch it with them same way around. So I just got into Rangers. That's like excellent, mate. No, it's good. It's um it's, a, it's quite a it's quite a strange way to, to start supporting Rangers, I guess. But mm. it's uh it's maybe probably the best excuse I've had for me. If I'm being <laughs> honest, there's there's <laughs> not a, a non scot <laughs> But for a non scot <laughs> to, to support Rangers. But not just support Rangers. I mean, I've got lots of lots of pals that that they support Rangers and they're buffy down south as well. But it's the going getting into it that that yeah. way, do you know? Bit like the Dortmund match last year on European room. Brilliant, fantastic. Yeah, but, so, so but for me, any time any time I meet somebody, I've got to I've got to see a bit of passion, a bit of yeah. enthusiasm in their in their face, in their eyes. I like looking at people and. Just getting that, I feel for them. And, and it's nothing like football for passion. Mm -hmm. My mum was the same thing. She said I was like six, seven, and she said, I don't understand why you're screaming at the thing. Why, why, why you go so crazy on Liverpool school? She said, I don't get it. And then as an adult, she said similar thing when I said to her, well, names anything else, any of the sport, or anything that happens in your life, and you see people reacting like that, and it's only football. It's only football where people go that crazy, that emotional. Do you think it's you think it's maybe something that with with us being that the the working class, do you know, is that is that maybe our I mean we go to work, we've get you've worked your way up just a bit and Phil Phil's worked his way up just the same way that I have. Very similar backgrounds, do you know, similar guys, both had their struggles, um, both loved the Rangers, obviously, and it's is it genetic? Is it something that's maybe for our society, it's something that we feel that 
listen, we've got 90 minutes. This is the blue, and this is this is my way of this is my way of getting my, my stress out. And you know, it's it's like a lot of people go to boxing, a lot of people run up the hills and the likes. Do you know? Do you think that's true? It's, it's, it's got there's got to be an element of that to it. And you wake up and it's grinding. Yes. You wake up and it's buzzing, don't you? You know, you get, it's a nighttime game like this one. We pull up on the phone to eight o'clock. Well, right. up, at, at five six buzzing to watch the match. Then. It's it's like I I, I did uh, just. For him, they does not. I did an induction yesterday, and I was speaking to a guy. He was he was a Jordy, and no, no offense to, to Newcastle fans, but I was speaking to him, and I mean, he he just don't get it. Do you know, like they, we are, I mean, they they could look at us and say, oh, it's ten pot, it's ten pot, shit teams, blah blah blah. But at the end of the day, Rangers is like a religion. Do you know what I mean? Glasgow on an, an old firm. Exactly. Like, probably it, nowhere in the world like that. That's, it. And that's what I said to him. I said, apart from apart from maybe like River Boca, that there's yeah. there's no many maybe that Galatasaray and Arpachi Bashikdas, but if they're staying in the same city, and I said to him, I said, You hate Sunderland? I hate it's Sunderland. So I said, Well, pick up Sunderland and put it slap bang in Newcastle, I said, and then see how the see how the passion is and the hatred and add in religion as well and yeah. try attacking it that way. I said, but and then I spoke to two of the, the older boys, um Jock and Jod, and I was, I was speaking to them and I, I said to them, I said, I, I think nowadays Rangers is the religion and Celtic's the religion now. I think a lot of a lot of people are changing. They're not going to the church, they're not going to chapel, I think. Ibrox is the church for us. There you go. And Park yeah. the chapel, do you know? And it's it just is what it is. And it is something that gets us that bloody passionate, mate. <laughs> Me. But I, listen, I love I always, as I say, I always start the always start the podcasts just with a chat about football because it's it's important and for me it, it gets guys out of their shell. And most most people have like team though. It's rare that you have to speak to them and go, oh, what's your team? You go. Everyone's generally got a team. Exactly. And for me, I'd, I'd see I'm sneaky. I, I saw Phil with the, the, the British Army badges <laughs> and the in the poppy, so I went, Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, good guy, that's all to see. <laughs> and then I asked a few questions and, and dug a wee bit deeper, but I didn't need to dig much further when it when it comes to the big man. Uh, so t- tell us about your, your your growing up. Was there anything uh, how was life in the North West? Was uh, nothing. I mean, my my childhood was great, really, really good. I just didn't do enough after school. No, in fact, I went to college. I went to college. Yeah. school. I did public services. So public services course. I wanted to go and be a fine. I did, yeah. Go that? I went through the band. Started start the training and it was where um, I know there was a lot of strikes and all the green goddesses came in the army you had to come in and do the final. He cut all the recruiting and thought, oh, I think I'm not going to do that. So I went down to the Night in the old. So where did you... I know mean, not... It's, it's one of those ones, if I could look back on my life, I would maybe have done a, a stint in the army because I quite... I, I, had a job I like really. the fact that... I had a So what, what was the... Apart from, obviously, the, the lack of work, what was the what was the thing that drove you to to the army? Is, it, is was your dad in the army or was yeah, it a family was, thing? My brother was in the army. He was... He left as a lieutenant colonel. Um, so I used to talk to him all the time about the military. So and that's why I joined the reviews and the reading. I just feel really I mean, I was when I at the time when I joined, I was an apprentice welder. So I'd done two years of college, left at 18, apprentice welder. Didn't enjoy it at all, wanted to go and see the world. That's it, that was just an avenue. I couldn't see it any other way. Of getting educated. Ah, of course. And seeing the world. So you get you get a lot of people do that just for anybody that doesn't know. We we get a lot of um, we get a lot of managers and we get a lot of safety guys that, that come in uh, the, the industry, but they come in off the back of a, a, a military course because when they're third days off, it's something that, that gets drilled into these guys. Um and uh, just an extra bit of training, which is brilliant. Do you know it's a again it's totally different being out there on the field to Bloody Baghdad, I would imagine, <laughs> you know, but it's uh, oh, yeah. it's what 
Still, you can, yeah, that's quite saying you get a lot of cowboys out there. It's not, it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily hard, mate. It's not cowboys. Yeah. Um, so what, like you, you were saying about your, your nan was in the, the army, was it just something that you wanted to see the world, you wanted to learn, and that was that seemed like the most plausible thing for you to do? I, I, I never had any desire to be in the military or to be a soldier. I kind of I wanted to work with helicopters or pay fine growing up. And then the final moment I went there, I've always loved aircraft, a bit geeky. And then it just triggered them out to I want to get out of the town I was in and do something a bit more intense and welding in a in a factory. So it clicked and I just went for it for my Uncle Mike, he was still alive then. Um he was at my nan's, speaking to him in the background, and I could hear my mother going, is that Philip? Why is he? And she knew straight away. She knew why I'd phone. Yeah, a year later I was in, two years down the line I was pitching helicopters. Best job. It's, it's like, a, it's funny because even from myself, mate, I mean, it's, it's the town, it's the town you grow up in, it's, I, I speak about it all the time on the podcast, and it's like, Society telling you this is what you've got to do and has your team your support. Your, your life's kind of your life's kind of laid out for you before you even learn to talk. Mm-hmm. Do you know this is the team you support? Yeah. This is your religion. This is uh, this is the school you're going to. You're a product and, of your environment. That's it. exactly me. And it's I'm, I'm it's brilliant to see the fact that you've took a different, like an unconventional route, <laughs> do you know, it's, I, I say it all the time about breaking the cycle, do you know, it's like, I, I'd say that about my mum and dad, they born on the south side of Glasgow and the two of them unfortunately pass away in the south side of Glasgow because they love it there and they're happy yeah. and um, and that's that's what they're used to as long as you're at. Also me, they never make you But for myself, I, 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 nothing would make me happier than to be away from the pissing rain <laughs> and sitting on a sun lounger and uh, with, with, with my boys hanging out yeah. with a margarita just chilling out man and, and yeah. just loving it learning a different language all that stuff but that that appeals to me it doesn't appeal to my mum and dad and yeah. it's I don't know where the hell I got that from it's I really so. don't. and it's changing because it's it's like as I'd said before it's it's making those changes to your life it, if, if you were into drugs and your mum was into drugs and your grandpa was into drugs, chances are you're going to be into it. And it's in the when house. When it comes gonna... to your kids, your kids will end up taking it and their kids and their kids. And I think a lot of people are seeing it nowadays that life isn't just a, a open and shut that you're born in Glasgow, you stay in Glasgow, you're a Glaswegian, you'll never leave. There's a big barrier around about the city. Exactly. Like the, the Simpsons yeah. with the big goldfish yeah. ball on top of it. You, you, you're free to leave. And you're born you know? British, which is like winning the lottery of life. Oh, yeah. You get a British passport and you can go anywhere in the world. Aye. And, and uh, choose to travel by a rare now, isn't it? Definitely, mate. Unless you're coming to Shetland. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't talk to me about it. And then it's extortion. Let's, let's just see what I should have done. I should have put one up. Background and it could have been like the Bahamas, and you and I could have been sat in you as if we were in, as if we're on the Bahamas. I could open the window and it's like fucking Shetland oh, outside, it's, it's, yeah. it's pissing it down. And days and it's yeah. it's oh, it's wild, man. Like 20,000 people living. I've never known a place like that. It's, very it's, it's wild, but the funny thing is, and it's like even the other day, I had a, I had a bit of a tiff with, with one of the guys that was rename Nameless. Um, and the first thing I did, I went, I'm going to go on my talk with Phil, do you know, because he's one of my go-to guys. In fact, he is my go-to guy on this job, and i have said to Phil, I'd like to think that I would be the same, and it's something yeah. that I really on every single induction is just, listen, my door's open. Yeah. I'm never going anywhere. If you want my personal number, there it is. Let's just hash it out. Do you know, nothing's, yeah. nothing's more I'm important. By, I'm by saying that you, it's helping install me like a well-being culture in Alongside a safety coaching, no, which, which just, isn't pushed enough. Aye. So, really what about your, your time in the army, mate? Well, who was, how was that? When did you join? When did you join? Did you say? I joined 2004, left 2014. So, so 10, 10 years stint. Where did that Where did that take you to? From three years in Germany, a year in Canada, a few years in Northern Ireland, 
two years ago, I left them and then adventure training. It wasn't about it. So was it what 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 type of uh, kind of army work was it? Was it so did so, you get involved? So when you say when you say the army, people think you're on the, you're on the front line because that's what you see in the films. Well, that is really in the films, you don't see some sweaty mechanic in a oh. in, in in a shed fitting a helicopter for eighteen hours. So the, the boys, the action boys, can get out into town. So my tours consisted of twenty four hour shifts, eighteen hour shifts, working in aircraft hangars, getting oh. keeping them maintained so they can get out of up in the air for surveillance or getting the helicopters to get the boys out onto the ground. I mean, how did, you No, know, you said you had a good team of guys working beside you. How does, how is the, I know how bad the mental health is in construction, hence why I do what I do and hence why I've, yeah. I got in touch with yourself, mate. But how, how bad is it in the, the military? I mean, it's still not talked about. Still not talked about. I mean, that, I left 10, going on 10 years ago, so. I'd like to think it's got better, mm-hmm. but, but it's, it, it wasn't, I mean, it's at the forefront of everything we talk about now, isn't it? Mental health and military service. It wasn't back then, but then it was only 10 years ago. It's not, it's not that long ago. No, exactly. There's yeah. certainly no, like, when you leave, you just go and have a medical, dental inspection, medical inspection, yeah. chuck your kit in, hang your mod night, you get to share on your D-card in, and then out the gate you go and keep yourself home. That's it. Jesus, don't we do it? Is. I know it's, uh, I mean, I was reading something, I'd, I'd be a liar if I could tell you statistics, but I was reading something on the American Army um, a couple of months ago. It was just before my, my friend Joe came on the show, and it's, he was saying that it's really, like, they're starting to report it in the, in the American Army, and it's like one in three, for instance, are, are mental health conditions. Yeah. Like it could get worse, it's as high as it's ever been. And he had said, listen, the, the the British, if we were to have a look at it, it could possibly be worse, do you know, at least. At least the Americans have got cheap fuel and, and all that kind of stuff and cheap clothes and that that that, that kind of way. Whereas there's guys that the cost of living in, in Britain's pretty shit. Do you know, there's, we, we really get pumped for everything. So I can imagine how mm-hmm. hard it would be to go and do a tour and then come back to this country and just... Then drop in your drop in your badge and, mm. and get to it's when you fly back in, you fly you on tour and you get two weeks off in the middle of your six seven months, so you fly back into Bryce Norton, which is Oxford, and then you just you get given the pass to get on the train, that'll get you to wherever you need to go. And you still arrive home for two weeks. But twenty four hours earlier you were getting mowed. Right. But you're on your belt buckle yeah. It's brass not flying around and it's like even even with the, the Americans, when I mean, you see them and it's they, they get a half price at the Disneyland and Bush Gardens and all that kind of stuff, and it's always a big... I mean, I know after like, Vietnam and that, the, 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 the armies were kind of frowned upon and all the carry-on, and now it seems to have really changed a wee bit. And they're, obviously, they're, they're, they're so, so proud of their, their, their forces. Yeah, I did a year that when you go into a bar or whatever, kind of two forms of ID, so we had driving licence and military ID, and we'll take you to the front of the bar, to the front of the queue, these four lads are uh, British military getting the group on this. Bet you ain't got, bet you ain't got you some. <laughs> oh, but I've got you some <laughs> other things too. No, I, I wouldn't imagine, I'm not saying you'd have been paid for it, big man, because you're, you're a handsome dude. Yeah. But I'd imagine it got you some extra curricular things. Yeah. Well. But they appreciate the old thing. Belts they do, it, but it's it's just different. It's like before hockey match, just to say, from any veteran stand up and you get around the floors, things like that. Right. Like it's in a culture where it's not in us. No, it's uh, the, the British the British Army, unfortunately. They, I, I don't know how you change that. I don't know how. But even then, like when I was in training uh, near Redden, going to Redden for drinks on Friday, Saturday, I'm not like be a, a scouser and a man clad of Scot- Scotch guy and a Jordan. You know that it's sports warriors. And you ain't getting them. It's not right. You have to go and sing them. You have a lot of health heroes badge in them. It's not right. Loads of times. Loads and loads. Really? They just associate you with trouble, don't they? Oh, so. But the training you to be killed, and then what? Not me as a technician, but in the infantry, they're trained to be killed essentially. Mm. But then you want them to be oh, nice and peaceful when you come on. Exactly. Don't have that button. Oh, you've got no button there. to switch off. You've got the off button. And I was the same. There was a, 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 one of the programs that I was watching, and that's what I was saying. There was a guy that went to I think it was Iraq, and after the war was finished, women said her husband came home and he was 
Yeah, I'm um, just a different man. It was just the but when nobody comes up to it. And some of the stuff that he saw was just horrible. I think I told you that one. It was like giving the giving the kids some sweets at the side of the road and he, he came back, he was all happy and came back a couple of hours later and the kids were hanging through trees. Mm-hmm. And that that must be hard for us as I mean Don't say that the being too but it's like the, the Brits, we think we we're, we're, no, we're immune to that kind of stuff. And I, I think you and I spoke about it a few weeks ago. It's we ignore the fact that stuff gets on like pedophilia and all that kind of shit. The, the dirty, murky stuff in society. Mm. I think half the reason that my mental health is no bad now is because I ignore the fact that that shit gets on. I just lock it up. It's like a blank part of your brain that you just go and disassociate yourself. Like, like, I don't listen to any news. I don't listen to the radio. I don't have any social media. No news apps. Sometimes things happen and I'll be in the office and I have no clue what's going on in the world and I like it that way because I, I just feel free all the time. It's good that only like, eh? but, And the news is only full of negative stuff. So there's no, there's no the biggest... No, it's propaganda. Exactly, yeah. But it's like the, the only... And I'd, it's funny because this was a conversation that Phil and I had had and it's... If, if you are feeling a wee bit down, come off social media. That's oh, what it is. So First good. and foremost, come off bloody social media. Stop watching the news. Do you know? Do you, stop. If, if you're sitting here and you, you're one of the people that text 40 people at once, how, how many people text you back? Exactly. Do you know? And see the rest that never ever get in touch with you. Yeah. That's how you are. Get shot at them. Yeah. Do you know? And it's like... When you watch the news, it puts you in a downer. When you watch the, the soaps, the soaps are there for a reason. Don't let the soaps kid you on. <laughs> it centers, it centers around the, the Queen Vic and the Roll Pack and all that stuff. It centers around everybody getting drunk. But you know what? It's always booze and it's always drama in the pub. Drama in the pub and serial killers. There was a, a, a guy on Hollyoaks or something and they must have killed about 40 guys, do you know? <laughs> It was like second to Harold Chapman. <laughs> how how does nobody recognise that dude? He looks the exact same. But the, the soaps are there for a reason. It's, it's so you look at it and you go, do you know what? Maybe my life isn't like that shit. Look at look at Phil Mitchell. He's steaming. <laughs> but it's like again, <laughs> it's womanising. But it's, it's all that kind of stuff, mate. And it's it's funny when I meet somebody like myself and. Phil and I have not just got music in common, it is all these stuff like with, with the football, it's it's your, your attitude towards um, the, the things that have kept us down in society, like the news, like the newspapers, like... But that's very much coping mechanisms for that for like, it, they certainly just help me stay positive all the time. Right. Almost all the time. Of course it is. Yeah. And see, see, if you, see if you wake up first thing in the morning, you make yourself a coffee and... We, we love coffee. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I don't drink anymore. I don't do anything dodgy. I love my coffee. I'm a yeah. coffee, coffee addict and a chocolate. And if I get my chocolate and my coffee and I'm sitting and say, right, news, and I sit down and watch the news inside five minutes, I'm down. Do you know what? It's just fire a load of negativity into your own head. And it's just, it's amazing the difference in your life when you just turn off the news. Off. And it's just changing habits. So it's just habitual turning the news on, oh, yeah. going on your, your apps and flicking through it and, and scrolling. Not, none of it's improving anything. You're not getting smarter. No. Mental health's only getting worse. And it's everyone acknowledges it. It's not a secret, is it? Like, everyone right. knows that. Everyone knows that your mental health will get better without that shit in front of you. Unfortunately, mate, it was like when, when I went down yesterday for the briefing and we were briefing at half seven in the morning. All the guys are there. And I was the only guy that wasn't on my phone. And I was talking to, I was talking to old Jock, and he's he's past retirement age, and, uh, and I'm, I'm talking about him about the football. It's a silent. I said, "Is this? A, is this a bloody it's like you know? It's it's a silent a, a funeral? <laughs> who's died?" And he said, "No, everybody's." And I went, "Jesus, he's on phone. Everybody, but it is. It's just and it's and a lot of communication. Ah, if you've got to your left and to your right, never talk to them. I know, mate, but that's." That's maybe why, as I said, like with, with two guys in construction every day taking their own lives, it's, that's a lot to do with. Do you know? It's, it's like mm-hmm. even even to tell a, even to tell tales at a school, right? Like we we had a guy yesterday, 
and I showed that I want that to there was a guy that was working on saying, this is off the record, no names, no company, no nothing. But the guy was working on safe and I had a word with him and I sat down and we had a chat. Um, and then I had a chat with him this morning and he was he'd, a, he'd alcohol on his breath, put it that way. But what they I do is as a as a person, be right, I should be putting them off site. Mm. And I don't want anybody to sue me for this unless something happens. Of course, yeah. But my job should be to put that guy off site. But the human side to that is well, what happens if I if I tell the certain people that boy sack, right? Yeah, it's all sack and straight off the plate. Yeah. So yeah. how how do you how does that guy go home to his wife and kids and explain? You how, probably don't know that. Exactly, and go and explain to his wife and kids how he, he made a mistake. He get caught working unsafe. Then he had the drink, which, but speaking to his supervisor, he drinks every night, and then. And then it's like, but what do I do, mate? They are get the guy sacked, mm. and then it's, it, it's nobody gets sacked, and it goes on the upturn, especially if they're drinking, right? And it's it's, it's only gonna, it's only down. gonna go one way, and it's like that's the way I think about life. Yeah. And why why should I why should I have that in my conscience? I mean, don't get me wrong. I spoke to his supervisor, said, listen, if it was me, get him in, have a chat, try and coach him if you need that man. Find out what's going on, you know, rather than it being you've tested positive, you know, you're bagged, and then that's when his that's when that man's problems really, really start. You know, you feel good when you're drinking excessively. You feel shit every day, don't you? Know? So he's just masking a problem. I mean, see, that's almost guaranteed that he's masking a problem. Right. If he's staying to the booze every day. And what, what we were saying, I mean, Phil and I speak about it quite often, it's up here when you're in the, when you're in the Shetland Islands, everything's Everything's so magnified up here oh, because yeah. you've got no way of getting back onto the mainland. Yeah, yeah. You, if if something happened with my family just now, couldn't get the last plane to Glasgow. Maybe morning. mid morning tomorrow. At least. So I'd be say we'd go and get the ferry from Lerwick to Aberdeen. If there's space, if there's space, oh. and then you've got a three-hour taxi drive from Aberdeen to Glasgow, and it's like. Do you know that it, it makes things, well, tiny, well, tiny, tiny yeah. trivial things, it just blows them out of proportion. A lot of people don't stick it out, do they? They come for two weeks and then they're away. But then you have, what happened last year, nine, ten months? I don't think it must be affecting. Of course it is, mate. And it's not an easy place to work. So you can slow them up. It's just hard. And like it's the psychology of being away. And not being able, most of the time you can get in the car and go home. Even if it's an eight hour drive, there's a safety factor there. Everything. So just get in the car and it can be on. Right. But here you can in other be. people's hands of course it is and it's just it's, it is that thing I mean if I'd said that if this job was in Peterhead or it was in Aberdeen I could still drive home do you know if I'm doing 11 shifts and you off then I could drive back mm-hmm. spend a night a Friday and break it up do you know you could break it up a wee bit and then you come back and the second week's not as hard as it has been yeah. and I think with us with us trying to get this job pushed over the line that's when the complacency kind of creeps in. And you see it. Yeah. Do you know, you see chances being taken, maybe the uncertainty of guys not knowing where they're going to go next. That maybe plays into it. That's it. And we are probably 90% contractors. Um, scenes. And it's like we, this we've got a lot of guys up here that are, um, that are agency as well. Yeah. So it's like you don't know where that's coming from next. So, and it's like, as I'd said on a previous podcast, like, if construction workers make up 9% of the British population, right? We are 9% construction workers. So why are we not doing something to bloody help these guys? Do you know if... It's very funny look at the stats of uh, suicide. You say two a day? Two a day. Two a day. Jeez. Two a day and three out of four of them are men. Do you know, it's so that because we don't talk. What's that? It's historic. The men don't talk, do we? Men don't look doctors. We don't share our problems. No. So why why do you think is that? Do you think that was just a, a society, a bravado, the football thing that? It's just the way. It's, it's how the generations before us were brought up and how they acted, and like you said, they're a product of our environment. Mm-hmm. But then it's never been talked about as much as it has been. If you look at a 10, 12, 14, 16 year old kids. They're growing up talking about it. So what's happening now if they're not going to affect in 10, 20 years? It's going to be better. It's going to be infinitely better. 
Surely but there's no quick fix. No. It takes a long time. But surely it's got to be, Phil. I mean, there's got to be that change. Even, it's even when you look at it, mate. Glasgow's getting worse when it comes to the drink. That is, I mean, it's, that's, it's so accessible. It's so easy to get it. You can it. Just get it off your phone. I said that you can get it. You can go on Just Eat now and scroll through it. KFC on a, on a crate. Can you see us? KFC. And same look. Get a beer with the same guy. And then you can phone up your dealer and get a couple of gram dropped off. Do you know? And the, the same person that's delivering your KFC and your carryout can drop you off 40 fags. So and that you, you're, you're smoking all night. You've got all your fags, you've got all your drink, you've got your KFC, you're on a mad one. Yeah. And it's that cycle, do you know? It's, it's so bloody accessible, rather than... 24 hours a day. But I, whereas it never used to be. I remember just about the pubs used to shut in the afternoon. Shut? Sure. You weren't open no. from 11 till 1 the next morning. So there was no 24-hour supermarkets, there was no delivery service like that. The more accessible it is, the more it's going to be used. Well, it's, it's, and, it's, and it's just getting more accessible. And even with that, I mean, it's, it's good for people to speak up about their, their mental problems. But at the same time, I mean, I put something on LinkedIn last week. And I was like, can somebody for the, the SNP or the Tories mm-hmm. or Labour or Lib Dems, can somebody give me an answer to this as to why... You can advertise alcohol at the one I said previously it was like five to eight in the morning on Sky News. Yeah. How can you do that? And how can you go and just eat? Just eat the clues in the title. Yeah. How can you go and just eat over a carry? How does that work? Yeah. And like I could guarantee if you ordered your drink, you ordered your, your cans and your fags and all that, I could guarantee you the Coke would be there before. I guarantee you it would be there before I see myself sitting there like that. Ah, lives on your street, that's why. It's my next door neighbour. He just sits outside and he looks in the window and he's like, yeah. this Craig's in, yeah. Craig, you're right, mate. Yeah. <laughs> put, put the wee thoughts in your head. Mm. But it's like, but for us, like, why why do you think the, the HSC don't care? Why, why, why do you I think they don't know what to do about it? Who's the people? So I, I think is, is it not insanely profitable to have alcohol sales, tobacco sales? Of course it is. But see when, see when you look at it, mate, and it's like my mate Steve, it's like, and Steve does amazing work, and I'm always picking him up on social media because he's a, not just a, 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 a great guy, but he's a brilliant advocate for mental health and, and addiction. But even with the stuff that he's trying to do, he's trying to get to the heart of um, government to try and make a bit of change. And as he says, like... He's only going to be in part of the plan, isn't it? Or wherever the actual bills are changed. If you can't sell at five to eight in the morning, you can't sell on food apps. And, you... and if you've got... But see if you had two guys, if you had two guys every day in, outside in the park dying... HSC would shut us down. Do you know they would they would shut us down? So why is why is it accept, why why do we look at it and we say right, zero tolerance? Zero that this is us we're going for project zero mm. one. No accidents, no near misses, no incidents, which is bullshit. For a safety guy, it will never ever happen unless you're hiding what's happening out in the site. But for you to say, right, we want zero, 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 what what happens at night? Do you know what? Why are these guys? You can't act on a on a, on a daily basis or something that will kill you instantly. You well, can go and waste away over 20, 30 years every night if you want. I'm a facilitator and uh, take a lot of tax money. Not for the problem. And it's the same. HSC is the government. Of course, that is. Really and that, and that's why it's that's why it's important for guys like yourself and guys like myself to be out there and speaking to the guys and actually not just. That is just ties me to all companies. If you will. Some people just need to do that. Don't chat them all like say all the time. No. All the time. They'll just not generally come and open up. Especially no. guys in their forties and fifties, I'm saying the older generally. It's, so it's, cool. it's just it's just never it's never been done and their parents didn't do it and their brothers and sisters probably don't. Sisters well, women always talk them generally. No. Men don't, so yeah. That's a bit sexist. Hey. I'll be the editing that out. It's shocking so those those are the views of Bill Nicholson, not of Craig Mayton. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's like, 
for, for, for me, that, that's the important thing, is getting guys like yourself, like me, like Steve, like Rob, all these great guys that I know that are out there busting their ass to try and get guys like the Lighthouse Charity. This is, we're in here and we're in a room that nobody ever uses. This is the well-being room up at Gergord. And you've got, like, I could show the guys on site this picture and I could guarantee you the guys on site won't recognise who any of them are. Maybe, maybe the wee man, but they would know Phil and they would know me. Do you know? And that's that's the difference. And I, I had a rant on LinkedIn, if anybody's seen it. And if you haven't seen it, have a good look because it was a good wee... <laughs> Paul agree, it's a good was comedy. A, it was a good wee rant because I'm sick of this. There's a, there's a certificate and that's acceptable. It's mm-hmm. like... Ah, look at me, and we go to a work with no we, because I would would refrain from going to them. It's like, what? Why do you need that certificate or a wee award to go? Oh, look who I'm talking to. Yeah. The guys on site wouldn't be able to pick them out of a lineup. No. Do you know? But they know you, and they know well, it's, just, it's actions, isn't it? You can go and do your one day course, your two day course, become a mental health first aider, or however else they brand the course that you do. But unless you're going to actually go out there and do it, you don't. Not much, but you've got to. But do you so think being selfless in it? And of course I do. I do it for selfish reasons. It makes me feel really good helping people. You said that. It's just, it's just selfish and selfless. But ah, that was that was a powerful, that was a powerful point that you made to me. Was that last night? I think it was. Yeah, it was last night. And and Phil had said that to me. He said, "Listen, I I do what I do for very very selfish reasons because I get a kick out of helping people." And for me, that's one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard come out of the mouth. Yeah, here he construction worker, mm. slash army dude. <laughs> and it's, but see, these kind of things, that's, you, you teach that to somebody, I'll teach it to somebody else. We just keep going with these things mm. and we just keep trying to break that bloody stigma. So it breaks the one. And you keep chatting. The more, the more you do it, the more people see it. People think good traits are copied, aren't they? Nobody yeah. takes it away, carries it on themselves. But that's that's what we need to do, mate. Or you get the right person talking and you save a life, you never know. Right. And that's what we need to do, mate, is just keep that keep that chat going. And it's it's important for you to keep doing what you're doing and for me to keep doing what you're doing. I know you like tell me a wee bit about what, what Siemens do for what what you guys do for well being. It seems to have been really good. I mean back with the three Years, whenever the pandemic started, I, I've been working for Siemens for a few years. And I wanted to, I wanted to help the people that were going to be on site because we were going into what the government called a bubble. So we had, we were on our site, and there was a lot of people that were going to stay in the work bubble and not travel home to the to the loved ones for fear of taking it back to them because we didn't know what was happening. Stay in the bubble. So they're going to be away from home for, for a long period of time and being exposed to I know exactly what that does to your head the first time. Most of us are in construction away for one or two weeks at a time. Mm-hmm. And this was looking at once and once a month. So I thought, what am I going to do? Right. For me to do it in the work capacity, I had to go do this course. Oh. Legally, did the course and, uh, and then just put some toolbox talks together to present to the lads with the aim of get that out of the way in 10 minutes. That'll give some information like this, which is generic. And then we can have 20 minutes of chat. Right. Hard to get guys chat. Also, I mean, did it every week for like three months. And after two or three weeks, I could stop them. I didn't even have to prompt them. We were just chatting across the table. Well, at first it was oh, somebody I know. Oh, somebody I know. And then after a few weeks, ah, when I was younger, I was a gambler and I was like, I did this. And it, do you know, it made me feel this way. And this, is, this is what happened because I didn't get any help. And then they'll be the younger, well, I've had some help. And, yeah, don't. It's really good, but you've got to open them up. It's, it's when you get the guys to open up, you've got to make sure for anybody else that does what we do. It's important that you've got your out, which is somebody else that you can have the, the chat with to unload on them, and they've got somebody as well. So it's like more like a support group. Yeah. Because that's, that's, that's as I say, self help, you know. I, because I, as I say, I had that problem last week, and the first guy I went for was Phil, and that's, that's how. We all roll. Yeah. If they, we, we can take on a lot of problems, but when it happens to us, we need to have somebody else that we can yeah. trust and, and go and have that chat with. And it's it, it's funny because a lot of it is nowadays a lot of it is a hit box exercise. And we, we we spoke about that and it's not necessarily for the 
job that you're doing and the job I'm doing. But a lot of it, when you look at it, I mean, when you go to tender for another job, it's a case of how many mental health first aiders have you got? So it's like, mm-hmm. tell me how many fire marshals you've got, tell me how many first aiders, uh, prove it, and then show me how many mental health first aiders you've got. That's but the type of... How many like, say, how many of the passages within that office? Exactly. So you, you'd say, like, we had a conversation the other day, I'm not <laughs> going to repeat it, but from my experience, I know for a fact there's a lot of people sitting there with certificates that should be shamed because you need to get out and about. You can't just go, well, I've got a nice wee lanyard and oh, I've got a nice funky green and white pen. And it's getting out there and speaking to guys. It's it's having that in you to, to go. I mean, great. And, and also, if you go to somebody saying, are you all right? Well, you don't seem great. And if they are, and they generally are, they'll not be intended. No, I've been asked if I'm okay a few times because sometimes it might seem like I'm stressed because of whatever day I've been. Uh, one of the missions did it a few weeks ago, twice, he's asked me the same thing. Are you sure you're okay? Mm-hmm. Said, I promise you, I'm fine. Said, you're just some, something different. I wasn't offended. There was nothing wrong. No. I was having a mad busy day. I was probably less talkative than normal. Mm-hmm. But that's it. No one's offended if you get it wrong. It's even, even without me. So what's the news? I always ask guys, I always say, and that is, it's important if you're speaking to, if you're speaking to men, if you've got men at your work or whatever, just ask, are, are you all right? Mm. And if they say, ah, t- sound, mate, sound, but are you? Yeah. Ask it, d- you dig that you. bit deeper. You're not, so you're not being nosy, you're not, no. just say, back it up with something, just say, listen, you're a lot quieter than you usually are, or I've noticed you've yeah, gone to the pub maybe three times a week when you usually just go the once at the weekend. Yeah. It's noticing these changes in people and noticing the behaviours. And I think that's down to the, that's ultimately where the, the awareness for me is far more important than having somebody saying, right, I'm going to make you 10 mental health first aiders yeah. and give me the money because followers on my Instagram will know. And my LinkedIn is, I, I had a company that came to me and said, I want 10 mental health first aiders. I want this, that, and the next thing. I could have easily walked out with four and a half grand or a couple of weeks' work. Yeah. And I said, no. And they said, so what do you mean no? And I said, listen, I'm working on something. Leave it with me and I'll get back to you. And sure enough, use that four or five grand elsewhere. Do you know, use it on days out for the guys and make them feel that wee bit better and part of a team rather than the you know, yourself, that tiered system. That's it, mm-hmm. And it's like senior management and the guys at the bottom. There is none. It's yeah. to me, it's who's a who's a asshole and who's a sound person. Yeah. I was gonna say a sound C U N P but who's who's and I've always said that it doesn't matter where you come from, what mm-hmm. your skin colour is, what football team you sport, if you're an asshole, you're an asshole. So yeah. that's it. But it's it's getting it. It's just having that chat with everybody. It's making sure that guys on me that usually the life and soul of the party starts becoming a, a recluse mm-hmm. and, and starts, and that's why I say that. That's, 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 why, you, that's why you get these passengers, they're scared to go and do that. I'm just scared to go and have the conversation. No, I mean, but it's, it's not too difficult. There's so many techniques out there. Like, as one I learned recently was called scheduling. So you get, get in the tap and you feel a bit down, whatever. So, where would you rate yourself? 10 the app, please. One. Uh, uh, the, the lowest, and we'll say, oh, I'll have to work on my five. And then follow up with, well, why are you not a four? And then treat them to think of the positive. Yeah, it's like, that. It's brilliant. Exactly. It's just, and, then, and then they're talking. Right. And before you know, you'll get out of them what's wrong. It's all the it's all the tricks. And that's, that's brilliant. It's definitely something that I'm going to use. And feel free if anybody else is maybe listening to this and they think... Not my idea, I took that from somebody. I don't know. But it's not, it's not trademark, yeah. so we wouldn't be, we won't, we won't be sued or anything. Don't sue me and Phil. Sue, sue Bob. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, even, it's even things like this. I mean, this is in the, this is in this room. Not many people know about this room. Do you know, it's a, it's a wee secret, you know, a wee secret of... The, the, the management and it should this should be on the bottom floor it should be beside where the guys have their tea sure. do you know and they know yeah. that they can Locked come to the office office. For our management. exactly this is right beside the senior management this room and you've got your I mean these it's important to know about the Lighthouse Foundation it's important to know about Papyrus it's important to know about Mind do you know and a lot of the guys that's why I seem to put them on QR codes for the men because 
if it's something that had been scanned and the Lighthouse Club have got something really good to do with uh, the QR code and hard hats. Brilliant idea. Yeah. Do you know if, if you're not feeling like it, you just quick scan, do you know, and that oh, picture sure. it, and they're putting them in the back of uh, the toilet doors as well, which is something I'm going to do downstairs. And it's just everybody doesn't want to talk. But maybe if you can catch the one out of ten that do, yeah. do you know it's it's making that we change me. If you wanted to talk, they already would have. Hundred percent, mate. Hundred nudge. Nah, it's a little a, nudge in the right direction. Nah, but uh, but I'll listen, mate. Thought like we'd get fell on that my first face to face in a good wee while. Um, it's been brilliant. It's been well overdue. Um, for the two days to sit in here and have a chat. But again, if anybody thinks that this might benefit their friends or their family or whoever, just share it on. Do you know, nothing, nothing's more important than us getting everybody talking. And uh, and if you've got any queries, just by all means, just send me a message. It's not a problem. Um, and we can have a wee chat about it. And if not, you've got the Samaritans there. It's 116123. Um, feel free to phone them day or night. And um, have a good day. Cheers.